Welcome to another exciting episode of Backstage Showcase. I'm your host, Andrew Bermudez. And yes, I do realize it's been a long time since the last time I've released an episode of this show, but I must tell you that a lot has been going on lately, both with THAC 14, which just ended with the release of New Year's Resolution. You can go uh, check that out today. Really nice film. And among other things like the third fan choice awards and well can't talk about that one yet but just in case you aren't aware today just so happens to be cable car day and here's the nice thing is that to celebrate cable car day i actually have some cable car related content to talk about and what i will be talking about today is not actually a physical character or prop or location or things like that it's a sequence the history behind creating a sequence it's the cable car battle from johnny thunder and the wisdom of the ancients now before i start talking about the sequence as it was created for johnny thunder and the wisdom of the ancients i must first go back to its origins because here's the thing this sequence is older than the script for Johnny Thunder and the Wisdom of the Ancients. If you're wondering how that's possible, let's take a flashback to, I don't know, say 2005. Because in 2005 was when the very, very, very first version of Johnny Thunder and the Secret of Marco Polo was written. Most of the details in Johnny Thunder and the Secret of Marco Polo were changed, but there was a lot of general themes that stayed the same. And one of them was having lots of pop culture references in the film. So if you watch the movie, you have references to Patton, you have references to Mr. And Mrs. Smith, you have Pat, you, uh, you have references to the Matrix, all these different references. And originally, at, right after the Balshion, uh, the movie was going to have a reference to the video game Indiana Jones and the Emperor's Tomb. And in that video game, there is a cable car battle where Indiana Jones is on the cable car and he has a machine gun on top. And then he's shooting down Nazi aircraft to get up to the temple where he is going to find the treasure. And this sequence was going to emulate that almost identically. You can even see in this concept art that the locale is even going to look very similar. In some ways, the similarities is kind of what led to the scene's downfall and its eventual removal from the finished movie. But, all, but mainly, it, the big, biggest reason why it was cut out was we felt that following up action with more action was not a good idea. I mean, you just had the Battle of Xi'an. Super pulse-pounding sequence, and really... Honestly, this may sound weird, but the worst way to follow up an action scene is with more action. But essentially, the audience just feels tired after the fact. So, the idea was essentially cut from the movie and put on the back burner. Just a few months before Johnny Thunder and the Wisdom of the Ancients started production, uh, there was a huge rewrite in the script. Um, there was some discussions and meetings over the script and it was agreed upon that the script was just too repetitive it was just the adventurers go somewhere the villains chase them they find a portal key do this x number of times until they find all five portal keys and then they go get the treasure and they go home it was really repetitive and then we decided uh -uh, we're going to vary things up a bit so that's when we adjusted things we threw out some locations brought in some other ones i want to say that was around the time that the grand canyon sequence was completely cut from the movie and during this time uh when we cut out the grand canyon sequence we took the train idea moved it to the zimbabwe part of the film as it appears in the finished one and we're thinking okay so we've cut out this one location what should we do now and then we wanted looked at all the different places in the world we saw where we looked generally to see where there was a general void more or less and where there wasn't a portal key and then we decided well, let's do romania and when we're we're doing research on Romania to decide what kind of things we can have happen there in order to find the next portal key and where it can be located, we discovered that there is a cable car 
that runs from the city of Brasov up to the top of Mount Tampa. So then I came up with the idea of pulling up this old cable car idea that we had from before and resurrecting it as a new action scene for that part of the movie. When it came time to do the filming and compositing for the cable car sequence, however, we knew we did not want to repeat the same mistakes that we made with the Aero Nomad battle and the Secret of Marco Polo. Honestly, it looks kind of poor. It, it, it doesn't. It didn't look right. So we and we kind of had things characters come see through and things like that. We did not want to do that again. We had much better technology by the time Wisdom of the Ancients rolled around. So we knew we just wanted to get in and do it right this time. In fact, for this particular sequence, the only real animation that was done with the cable car and the airplanes was really technical stuff. Moving characters, spinning propellers, rotating uh, different pieces in place. And then once we put it into the editing stage, it would look a little different. So if it was rotating in place, that it would, we would then recomposite so that it would look like a camera move and that the physical item was not actually rotating. Or like for the airplanes, even though the only animation that was done with the airplanes was the propeller spinning by using scaling tools and moving the position of the compositions and things like that, it would then look like that they were actually flying through the air. Once again, like in Secret of Marco Polo, green screening was a challenge, but going, this time I went in knowing what I was up against, so I tackled it a little differently this time. You see, the problem was before I was using software where it could only say this one color can be removed and if it appears in other things, that's too bad because it's just reading the whole scene. Now, however, I have two advantages. One, I can create masks so that if there's specific areas that I don't want to disappear, I can just put in this mask and say, hey, don't look in this area for these specific colors. And on top of that, the other thing is that I can actually mask off multiple colors, which really came in handy in getting this masking to look right. And the backgrounds altogether actually are all computer generated. Those are not stock images that you're seeing behind them. It is all computer generated imagery. It was all created in Maya and I constructed all the polygons and things like that to integrate them into the sets. I wanted to make it look integrated, but at the same time, it looks, it's, it's a little, a little overly simpl simplistic, but it didn't really matter to me because I wanted the main focus to remain on the cable car and the airplanes regardless. Then, once I understood what tools to use and how to implement them, it was all just a matter of compositing it, to, compositing it together, animating everything to make it look like it belonged in the scene, everything look, make it look like it was all moving the way it was supposed to, and then it was then integrated into part of the movie as you see it today. And that is a wrap for today's Backstage Showcase. Once again, happy Cable Car Day to all of you. And if you want to see other films by us, just check out our channel, our YouTube channel at Mustache Maniacs Film Co. And also, if you want to check out the main hub for our network, just check out our official website at mustachemaniacsfilmco.webs.com. Also, don't forget that coming soon is the third Mustache Maniacs Film Co. Fan Choice Award, so keep an eye out for that. And we're also running a few fan surveys on our press room at mustachemaniacpressroom.blogspot.com, so check that out today. And don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for joining me today, and I hope to see you next time.